All right, this is Mr. Duncan. Uh, today in class, we noticed that there was a lot of questions in the homework about number 42. Uh, this is from section 2.1, and that is on page uh, 48 and 49. And this is problem number 42. It says, find one terminating decimal and one repeating decimal between negative one-half and negative one-third. I think the easiest way to go about doing this problem, guys, is to plot both of these numbers on a number line. And I'm going to convert them first into their decimal form. So negative one-half converts to negative 0 0.5, which makes sense because this means 5 tenths, and 5 tenths would be 1 half if you simplified it. Uh, negative 1 third simplifies to, or can be converted into negative 0 0.3 with a bar over the top, meaning the three repeats. Okay, let's plot both of these on the number line, and let's see where we're at. So I'm going to make this quite a large number line, so I'm going to let this be 0 out here. Uh, let's let this value over here be negative 1 since both of these are, are between 0 and negative 1. Okay, so if I put negative 3, uh, negative 0 0.3, so I can quickly divide this line up. There's 0.5 right there, and so that would mean this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Okay, and I can continue over here, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. Okay, so this first value is right here. That is negative 0.5. So that goes right there. Negative 0.33, well, there's negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Negative 33 should be right around here, approximately. So that's where this number would be. Okay, so let's look at the numbers that are in between there. We have negative 0.33 up to 0.5, negative 0.5. Okay, so we need first um, a terminating decimal. Now this will probably be the easiest one to find. I need some number that's bigger than negative 0.33333, but smaller, that's more negative than negative 0.33333, but is less negative than negative 0.05. So let's see, I need something between 0.3 repeating and negative 0.5 repeating, okay? And an easy number that should fall somewhere in between there would probably be 0.4, negative 0.4, okay? And we can see that, in fact, in our number line. Negative 1, 0.1, negative 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 is right here. Obviously, that value is dead, is in between both of these. It's not directly in the middle, but it is between them. So we could use negative 0.4 as our terminating decimal. That would be absolutely fine. In fact, if we really wanted to extend this, let's see how close we could get to 0.33333, uh, negative 0.3333, without being um, less negative than that value. So if I choose a value really close, like right around here, that would be approximately negative 0.34. Now that is more negative than negative 0.33 with a bar, of course. So we could use that number as well. This would be a good terminating decimal, okay? In fact, any number that's larger than negative 0.333 on forever, anything that has a number that's more negative than that will work. Okay, we could also do the same thing with negative 0.5. I could get a number that's just really close to negative 0.5. Let's change color so we can see that. Let's choose a number right here, really close to negative 0.5. So that value, and let's use uh, blue since we've already been using purple quite a bit. Okay, so I will put that in with blue. Okay, that value, let's see, that could be somewhere in the neighborhood of negative 0.5. Four nine nine. That's really close to negative point zero five, uh, zero point five. Excuse me, but it's not quite. It's a little less negative. In fact, we could make these nines stretch out as far as we like, and we still would not be as negative as zero point five. And the reason for that is, guys, these numbers are not whole numbers. So this does not represent 499 and this representing 5, where 499 is a bigger number than 5. It's not the case. 
It's not the case at all. In fact, if we were to compare these two numbers, really I'd add a few more zeros onto the 5, and this number, instead of being 5 tenths, it becomes 500 over 1,000, and this becomes 499 over 1,000. Okay, so now we can see that we're comparing the numbers in a similar way. All right, so 500 over 1,000 and 499 over 1,000. Well, in terms of negatives, this guy is 1 1,000th more negative than this guy. So this number would be a perfectly good number to use as a terminating decimal. Okay, so we've gotten all that information. We're going to go ahead and try to find a repeating decimal. Now, believe it or not, this is just as easy. We, we don't have to do as much work as it seems. All we will need to do is write a repeating decimal, which is more negative than 0.333, but is still not quite as big as 0.5. So that shouldn't be too bad to do. Okay, we'll put those numbers back in. So, let's see. We need something that repeats that's not that's, that's more negative than 0.33333. So let's see if we can find a number that's somewhere in between. How about negative 0 0.34 with a bar over the 4? That's more negative than 0.33 with a bar over the top. In fact, we could even go a little bit bigger. We could do uh, negative 0 0.4 with a bar over the top. That would work just fine. That looks a little hard to read. Okay, 0 0.4. That would work as well. That number is still smaller than, uh, is still less negative than negative 0 0.5. So these would be absolutely acceptable numbers. In fact, we could get pretty creative. We could do 0 0.38 with a bar over both. That would be written out as 0 0.3, 0 0.38, 38, 38, on, on, on. That number is more negative than negative 0 0.333. Okay, you can see this number is more negative, right? Eight, eight is more is more negative than the eight hundredths is more negative than three hundredths, three one hundredths, and so on and so forth. So this number is definitely more negative. Yet negative point three eight is less negative than negative zero point five. So we have a bunch of options for things we could do for number forty two.